Hey there, everybody. Bob Beatty Barra here, and welcome to episode 17 of the My Friends Are Amazing podcast. So for those of you tuning in for the first time, I want to let you know what this podcast series is about and why the heck I'm doing it. Basically, I look at it at this as a way to document the amazing people I know in this life, pretty much a celebration of their lives and the sharing of their amazingness for others to hear. I've met some really cool people, and they do some really rad stuff, so I want to share it. And also, just like all the other social media that I engage in, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever this new latest one is, I use it as a way to leave digital breadcrumbs, you know, in case I ever become become unable to remember all these wonderful people and all the things that I've done in my life. So anyway, now that you know the why, let's bring you up to speed on some podcast news. The podcast is finally on Spotify. It's been there for a couple weeks now, so all you Spotify users, just search My Friends Are Amazing and subscribe or follow or whatever you do on that network. Heck, just listen to the show. I think you'll really enjoy it. In other amazing podcast news, I'm excited to announce that the My Friends Are Amazing podcast will be joining the Fox Valley Voice Network. Um, I will provide more details on that as they become available, but uh, basically just going to be another outlet to find the podcast, and I will share some of the other great podcasts that are part of that network in the coming weeks. So basically, it's time to introduce my podcast guest this week. And my guest this week is the amazing Bob Butterworth. Bob Butterworth is a web developer, designer, and tech nerd living in the western suburbs of Chicago. During the day, he works for TechPro, a local technology company, and has co-founded Crazy Quail Targeting Systems and a lifestyle brand called Chubby Tactical. In July of 2017, he, transfor- he transformed his life through a ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting, losing nearly 100 pounds in the process. This has only been over like nine months. At night, he enjoys playing board games, learning guitar, 3D printing, home automation, and spending time with his amazing wife, Andy. They are expecting their first child due in August and are excited to be parents and meet their new baby girl. So we talked a lot of fun stuff and a lot of uh, interesting diet science and things like that. So hope you enjoy. So let's go ahead and meet Bob Butterworth. All right, this is weird because this is the first time I've ever had a Bob on the podcast. So I'm going to say, hey, Bob, how's it going? What's up? Uh, so, all right, really quick question to start things off. We kind of chatted a little bit at the beginning, and this is not your first podcast. It isn't. So tell me a little bit about your first podcast. Uh, it was actually, uh, I have a blog called uh, Productivity Tomorrow, which is basically about productivity and more about procrastinating. And it's, I don't update a lot because I'm usually procrastinating. Um, but I was on a, a podcast and we were talking about that and I don't know, I'm blanking, can't think of the name of it right off the top of my head, but oh, well, that was apolo- the first one. Apologies to that podcast <laughs> in case that person happens to be listening. Was it local or national? Uh, no. or? Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, I think he's outside of, um, California. I don't know. That's probably wrong too. <laughs> How did they find you? Um, he found my blog. Yeah. And just and thought it'd be a cool guest. So pretty good SEO on that blog or? Uh, I, I don't think I've gotten much, much, uh, traction with it. But uh, no. How long ago was the podcast? Um, September, I think. So within the last, we'll call it 12 months because time flies fast and I can't do the calculation. <laughs> so for everybody listening, uh, Bob and I actually met a really long time ago. And we've kind of met a couple other times in passing. And we have some uh, technology nerd things in common. But uh, one of the things that we've had uh, in common a lot lately is... Uh, dieting and lifestyle type thing. So I'm going to ask Bob about where he is in his journey and kind of let him tell a little bit about the story and I'll have questions to ask in there, I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Keto. It's awesome. Um, It started, uh, my wife had started a new job. Uh, I think this was uh, over a year year or so ago. And um, now she's commuting and uh, I got her listening to Audible. So she was kind of devouring all these Audible books. And uh, she found one called The Obesity Code by Dr. Jason Fung. So she started reading it, and she's like, you know, I bet Bob would be interested in this. And at the time, I was really heavy, and um, I started listening to it, and it just made so much sense. Just um, everything that he talked about, uh, especially intermittent fasting. So kind of keto and intermittent fasting go hand in hand uh, together. And so we just kind of started it, and uh, it was a, a Wednesday. I remember it. I had 
Panda Express for lunch and probably devoured two or three plates of white rice and oh. uh, orange chicken. And uh, But that night we uh, started fasting and then uh, in the morning made some bulletproof coffee, which uh, for those that don't know, it's coffee with a tablespoon of butter mixed in and a tablespoon of coconut oil or MCT oil. And uh, just that la- lasted a-, a while for energy wise. So you went from carb binge the day before, <laughs> like, because I, when I... When I fall off the wagon, like mm-hmm. if I have a, we'll call them a cheat day, but that's really weak. Um, but if I carb up, like that intermittent fast the night that night mm-hmm. into the next day, I wake up and I, I want to eat, like yeah. craving, craving, craving. It wasn't, it wasn't bad. Um, I mean, I, it was. I was just starting too, so like I didn't. I, so I, you're full of piss and vinegar, and you're yeah. like, yeah, yeah. We were psyched. Like, <laughs> it, I mean, a lot of times you start a diet, and it's like, oh, we're gonna start Monday, and between now and then, anything that we can find to shove inside our mouth, we're gonna put it in there. Um, but it wasn't like that. We're like, let's just let's do it, and we were just instantly on board. It was really different from anything we had ever done before. So, so are you two still doing it together? So I am, uh, Andy sort is my wife. Uh, she's awesome and she's pregnant. So, uh, she had a lot of carb cravings and stuff uh, a lot early on in her pregnancy. So, uh, she's kind of getting back to it and she's uh, kind of always stuck with me and we'll do keto meals together. Um, so yeah. Okay. So a lot of my friends that I know listen to this may not know what keto even is. Cause I don't. I try not to be like that diet guy. Preachy. My kids hate it. My family like, <laughs> oh yeah, keto Bob. <laughs> what do we cauliflower? What are we having today? But so I kind of keep it pretty low key mm-hmm. with my friends. So uh, share with us like what keto is. Yeah, so it's basically a kind of a low carb diet, uh, similar to what Atkins was way back in the day. If you remember early two thousands, uh, it's basically low carb. Um, try to stay under twenty grams of carbs a day and uh, moderate amount of protein. Not. Ton, not tons, not having burgers every five seconds of the day. Um, and then, uh, getting all your energy from fat. So bacon, eggs, cheese, all that good stuff. Um, and, uh, eating when you're hungry, but then stopping when you get full and trying not to overeat and your body just kind of naturally works itself into a rhythm and you just aren't getting start or you aren't, aren't starving a lot. And, uh, it just, it seems to work for me. Are you doing like 65% fat, 30% protein, and like 5% carb? Does that math out? Yeah. Uh, I think so. Yeah. So th- there's kind of two two types of people. There's people that track their maker, uh, macros, and that's what they call them, uh, the macros between fat, protein, and energy, and people that don't. And some people call that lazy keto. Uh, it's not how I want to live my life, is tracking every calorie and stuff. So since the beginning, I've just kind of winged it and... Uh, and just did what I felt was natural. I mean, I read labels. Um, but do you track in my fitness pal? Because I think you and I are friends on there, aren't we? No, I, I mean, oh. I probably since I've been on keto, which uh, I started July thirteenth, two thousand seventeen. I probably track two days. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not in there very often either. But yeah, and only because it's it's too hard to track. You want to go out to eat, and not everyone posts nutrition racks. And yeah, I, I haven't needed to. Uh, well, I was gonna say what I found is I did track for quite a few weeks Mm -hmm. just to get an idea of like, you know, what a, a a good, like a perfectly macro balanced meal looked like, Mm -hmm. you know, I figured out pretty quickly, like two to three eggs, half an avocado and like, you know, either some bacon or a sausage, Mm -hmm. you know, like regular serving size, nothing crazy. And that was like a really good balance from a macro standpoint and actually made me feel pretty good and full. So so I got used to figuring out meal kind of like eyeballing mm-hmm. after that. So no, yeah, I don't track that much anymore either. Yeah. So, all right. So ketogenic diet. Um, so I see you. All right. So this is another question that I had. So you got me into a Facebook group. The, you know, I don't even know what it's yeah, called. Yeah, it's called uh, Keto Ninjas, The Baconing. And, uh, now, did you start that? No, uh, okay. actually, I found a, po- I'm a big co- uh, podcast listener, and so I had found a podcast called Two Keto Dudes, and they had started a Facebook group. This was early on in the podcast. I think that it really started like early 2016. And so they had started a Facebook group, and then it kind of morphed into uh, something else, and they kind of closed it down, and then they actually moved to a, a forum system. But... Uh, they, uh, some other people that were in the original group started up a new group. And so it's called Keto Ninjas, the Baconing. And, uh, it's just an awesome group. A lot of friendly people. No one's 
a stickler. No one's harping on you. If you no, and know, a lot of questions too, uh, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, it wasn't, uh, I think maybe a month and a half, um, maybe two months now, uh, they had saw my progress and, uh, me posting on the forum and asked me to become a moderator. So now I'm one of the moderators. Ah, very nice. So what, all right. So this is totally off tangent because the beginning of the nerd part. So what does a moderator for the baconing keto, the baconing, like what does the moderator do there? Uh, for this group, not much. Cause everyone okay. is, is nice. Everyone. Is, I mean, we're just kind of all like-minded and I, there have been some groups, other Facebook groups that kind of go off the rails. Uh, this isn't one of them. And, uh, so we just approve new users, um, and just kind of check people out make sure they're, um, doing keto and not a whole lot of Russian troll kind of action. No, in no, nope, not at all. Group. It's pretty laid back. Like, <laughs> There's, there's not much work at all. If you eat bacon, you're down for the bad guys. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but yeah, I enjoy it because everyone's posting pictures of recipes. And uh, so I get a lot of good ideas for stuff to try. And um, Is the Headbangers yeah. Kitchen guy in the group? I think so, yeah. He's I think one he, of them. I've seen him yep. respond and stuff. I swear by his recipes. First of all, he's funny as hell. Um, he did one the other day about... Uh, chicken noodles like making noodles mm -hmm. out of chicken and he, you know he tries to do this western united states <laughs> cowboy kind of are you looking for the new alternative are you tired of zucchini noodle this zucchini noodle that it's just so funny he's uh he's great and his recipes are super easy to follow yeah, I think he's in India. He's he's Indian, and uh, but he also is a metal fan. Oh and yeah. So they got like metal music in, and he's just he's really entertaining to watch. So yeah, if you're interested um, in some good ketogenic recipes that are simple to follow, actually it's weird. Most keto recipes are simple to follow. Another thing I yeah. like about it because it's like limited number of ingredients. It's just keeping it clean and keeping it pure. But uh, Headbangers Kitchen. So uh, if you're listening. There's your plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one I like. Um, so, yeah, I've been doing more YouTube now, uh, especially since going keto. Is just There's so many great YouTube people that uh, are out there. Um, I really like Highfalutin Low Carb. Uh, Wes, he was one of the first people that we really liked. And he's kind of a southern guy, and he's just really fun to watch. And then uh, a big one is Keto Connect, and they're just they, yes, they have a blog. They've got uh, a podcast called Keto for Normies, and um, they do the, the YouTube video, and they're just – they're they're madmen about posting and creating really good content, so they're actually where I got uh, a really good keto recipe called uh, egg roll in a bowl, or some people also know it as cracks law because it's so good. Um, what is cracks law? Well, it's basically like the inside of an egg roll, um, just without the egg roll, since we can't have breading um, and, and uh, that sort of thing. Do you and have that so one committed to memory? The keto connects, yeah, because it's so easy. It's only um, Basically, you get a uh, coleslaw bag, bag of coleslaw, a uh, pound of ground beef, and then you mi uh, start cooking that up, and you mix in some soy sauce. I actually add some fish sauce, too. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, in like eight minutes, you have a meal. All right. I haven't eaten yet, and I worked out <laughs> earlier. That is not a good combination right now. <laughs> so when I asked you to come on the podcast, we had a little exchange back and forth, and you said, hey... Give me another week or so, because I'm trying to hit this goal. <laughs> yep. So what was the goal, and have you hit it? The goal was 100 pounds down from my original weight uh, in July of 2017, and I unfortunately have not hit it yet. Uh, but that's okay. It's not something I but really But you're like nine months about. in, right? Not uh, even. Yeah, nine yeah. months. So nine months, almost 100 pounds. Yeah, about 96 pounds down. Holy shit. So are you working out with that, or is it just based on the keto diet it's some working out so uh let's not call it diet anymore we'll call it lifestyle yeah it's a, it's a total lifestyle. lifestyle because i mean even when i uh, I'm, I'm never stopping this i have never ever reason to sure i might go off a meal or two uh, but i just enjoy the way i feel uh, especially now uh, so yeah early on um you just get so much energy off of keto that uh i just really want to start moving and so i started working uh working out just walking so i i work over in a town town next to us uh called geneva and there's a park there, and I work right next to it. And so I just go out on lunch and walk around just because I had the energy and I wanted to get outdoors. Um, so that that's how it started. And then uh, me and my wife joined a uh, gym, and uh, so we started working out. And 
I tried one of those couch to 5k apps. I don't know if you've ever used one of those. <laughs> Just finishing <laughs> another round of the 5k part of it. So yeah. Yeah, and I, I was never consider my uh, myself a runner, but uh, we just started it, and it's easy because you're just running for 30 seconds at a time, running for a minute, and it just keeps upping and upping it. And so I, I started on the treadmill, and we go to the gym Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, and uh, do a little bit of weight training. That's what I kind of need to start focusing on now, I think. Um, but uh, started doing the 5K, and then signed myself up for one. Yeah, I saw. And uh, which one did you run? I did the uh, one in Naperville for. Uh, uh, St. Tr- uh, Patrick's Day. There's a really cool one in Batavia. There's about a million, but this one is around Christmas time. It's mm-hmm. the Polar Express Run. I've heard of that. It's yep. a really great cause, and uh, it's very interesting because most winters, it's a totally clean, dry run. Mm-hmm. Two winters ago, it was in six inches of snow, so wow. it was uh, that was a little intense, but uh, that's a fun one. So yeah, I completed the 5K. It's, I was slow. I, I really didn't care about my time, but it was more of just completing it. And I really wanted to do it without having to stop and walk. Um, so uh, yeah, my sister-in-law did it with me. And uh, my wife was there at the finish line uh, taking pictures and she started to cry uh, just because uh-huh. she was so happy for me. Um, but yeah, it was, it was uh, one of the highlights of 2018 so far, definitely. So have you continued the running training after the 5K? Yeah, I've done. I'm doing less just because I sort of needed a break. Um, I I was training a lot uh, on the treadmill. And like two weeks before, I'm like, I really need to get outside and actually run on the street. And that was so much harder than running in, on a treadmill. I was going to ask. So primarily treadmill. Tra- I don't like treadmill training. First of all, I'm not very coordinated, apparently. Okay. But uh, the, it's also super different running outside versus running on a treadmill. It yeah. feels like the distance triples. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I just I picked a day and just thought I'd try it. And I was huffing and puffing and, and was quite miserable. And this was just two weeks before. So like going three days before the 5K, I'm like, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to complete this without having to stop and walk. But uh, uh, the two days beforehand, I'm like, I got to give this a shot. So I went back out to that same park and uh, just did the 3.1 and... And men made it. No shame in walking a 5K. <laughs> None at all. Yeah, it was just, it was one of the original goals of, of doing a 5K because, I mean, the timing, it depends. Like, because I'm sure there's people that walk the 5K that finished quicker than I did, but uh, it was kind of the, the principle of it. So, have you always been a goal focused kind of person? Because it sounds like a lot of the things that we've been talking about in these first few minutes is like, I set a goal. And then I incrementally made my way toward it. Is mm-hmm. that pretty much how you roll? Um, I would say no. Um, being I'm kind of gotten into productivity lately, so uh, it's it's getting more ingrained in me. Like I try to set weekly goals and daily goals, especially like I'll do uh, goals for at work and then goals for at home at night. Um, and so I'm I'm starting to do more goals, but uh, I've never. I find if you have a goal, you might not reach it. <laughs> Yeah, but I think that's from I mean, that uh, quote from uh, yeah, uh, what's that, whatever that movie was. But I think Dodge that's okay. I think that's okay. I mean, not making a goal means that you either have to like reset. Like mm-hmm. I'm doing um, Runtastic Results. Okay, it's an exercise app that goes hand in hand with their Runtastic running app, and uh, it's a 12 week body transformation program. But mm-hmm. um, you know that you do a fitness test at the beginning, and then it customizes your workout whether you want to do three or four workouts a week yeah so 400 400 jumping jacks you did today yeah see like (laughs) but there's i've done it this is my i think this is my fourth time through okay so you retest every time and then it recalibrates what your you know your exercise goal is going to be i'll tell you what you know it kind of like it it winds you up for the first six weeks it's like man you're a rock star you can totally do this Mm -hmm. and these are the sets and you know, you got 60 seconds of rest in between each set and you're like, Oh, that's really good. And you're knocking them off. And then all of a sudden week seven hits and they're like, ha ha playtime's over. And then you get hit with, you know, 400 jumping jacks and the yeah. rest in between the sets is only 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. So you have four or five exercises, and then 20 seconds rest and then four or five exercises for four rounds. So, you know, there's been many a week where, I've had to take two or three stabs at day three, Mm -hmm. day two. So, you know, that's kind of like a weekly goal I I missed at first. But I I don't know. I'm okay with not making goals because, you know, sometimes you got to set them higher than you think you can go. The Couch to 5K app, they kind of 
aim it for eight weeks and it definitely took me longer only because I didn't go like every day, like every, it was kind of Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and we got either got busy or something. So it was, it was probably over, I don't know, 14 weeks, uh, time frame. But, uh, I think Caroline and I have spent like six weeks on week three, day three. <laughs> we would just do week three, day three over and over and over yeah. again. Cause we were comfortable there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as long as it's working and you're, and you're still losing the same thing with keto, like you just, even if you're not tracking what your macros are, just, uh, macros, I keep forgetting which, which one's right now, <laughs> but, uh, um, as long as you're, whatever you're doing is working, just stick with it. And then when, when it stops working, change it up a little, try something new, start tracking and, and figure out, figure it out. So plateaus, how many, how often do you hit a plateau on this, this journey or has uh, it been pretty steady? Uh, it was steady up until about December. So I really haven't lost much since December. Um, that's even with like all the 5k training. Um, but I've read that having a plateau, especially when you're metabolically deranged originally, like if you're really overweight is that at some point you're going to hit a plateau and it's because your body is starting to work, work itself out and you're becoming more uh, insulin uh, sensitive. And we kind of didn't go over that part was um, like the obesity code, the book, the obesity code. Uh, one of the things is that insulin is what is keeping you fat and giving you cravings. And so that's why you go low carb so that uh, you can reduce your insulin and then that um, let your uh, body start burning more of your body fat and then you're not hungry as much. You can also add in fasting, which some people think is crazy, especially when I say I've, I fasted for seven days. I was going to say, because you do some crazy long... So you eat nothing for seven days. Yep, seven days except uh, some bone broth, uh, which seems to be getting more popular that people outside keto are, are knowing bone broth, which I don't know if that's a coincidence or, or what. But uh, yeah, bone broth, coffee, tea... Um, and keeping your electrolytes up. So salts, uh, potassium, and, uh, sometimes I'll drink pickle juice. Uh, so that also sounds, sounds weird to people. There you go. He's got the uh, potassium. Um, right here in my office for some weird reason. <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, seven days I've done, I've done a couple of five days, uh, a six day. Uh, and a lot of times just, I do intermittent fasting. So it's like eating dinner at like six thirty, and then not eating again until maybe lunch the next day. Yeah. So I do that a ton. Do you find like you're at two meals, like two meals is your regular or, or do you still try yeah, to maybe do maybe one and a half? Yeah. I mean, sometimes I'll come home from work and want like some cheese. I, lo I love cheese. And so who doesn't? I'll kind of have a, a snack first and then the meal. Uh, and that's maybe where I'm stalling a little bit, but, uh, did you ever have lactose issues? No. no. See, I used to, okay. but when I eat low carb, mm -hmm. Not a worry. My wife, though, she uh, had a, a lot of stomach problems originally. And then when she started keto, it kind of all went away. So I, I think it's definitely, it, it keeps inflammation down. And it just, it's it's not magic. I, I just, I really like the diet because there's no gimmick. So a lot of things, they're trying to sell you something or there's a potion you need to buy or pills. And keto is just, you have to eat low carb and have a moderate amount of protein and get your energy from fat and things, things that are, works itself out. Now, do you do any supplementation at all other yeah. than like vitamins or? Uh, just vitamins. Yeah. So all of the multi-day are uh, uh, men's vitamin and then I do magnesium, vitamin D and a fish oil. Um, but that's, that's about it. What do you, um, what do you do the fish oil for with, I mean, cause a lot of the fats are pretty oily. Um, I don't know. Do you do uh, much really? fish? Uh, yeah, we do some fish, but, okay. uh, I don't know. I, I just had read it was a, a good thing to take. So, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I feel any different taking any of these vitamins. Uh, I just take them cause I read they were, I will tell you if decent. you screw up on the magnesium and the potassium, especially if you're like working out, mm -hmm. you will pay the price dearly in the form of cramping and, oh, okay. uh, in, uh, I've never, well, I don't know if I've experienced it. I don't think I have. A lot, some people will experience like the rapid heart rate mm -hmm. from, I think that's the pot potassium and magnesium deficiency. Okay. So I've seen it actually, even on the, the, uh, keto side, I think somebody was asking about it. Like they'd been doing it for six days and sure. they normally have a really low resting heart rate, but they can feel it pounding in their chest. Hmm. And that's totally a side effect of not having that magnesium in your diet. Gotcha. And that's one of the things that can help you. So if you're, maybe we should say this, that we're not doctors and oh, we're not yeah, giving sorry. any yes, medical no. advice. I was going to ask about going <laughs> to the doctor next, but yes, we, this is just something that we read about. And we've experimented with our own bodies. Um, before I ask about going to the doctor, um, 
plateaus, back to plateaus. Mm-hmm. So even though you're not losing weight, do you still see results like in the changing? Because I mean, you can you can be losing body fat but not losing weight. Yeah, it's it's definitely slowed, but yeah, my body still is changing. I, I measure around my chest area, my waist, and my neck. Uh, those, those are kind of the three measurements I'm looking at. So they're they're definitely going down slower than they used to, um, but it's it's fine. Is there an end weight in mind for you? Like, I mean, is it 150 total, 200, 110? I mean, like, um, what's the... Uh, there's not an end weight, but there is a next weight, uh, which is 266. Uh, so I started uh, in July. That was I was at 383 pounds. Um, and then right now I'm at about uh, 289. Um, I think that's about 93, 94 pounds lost. Um, How did it feel busting below three? Oh, it was so good. So our company, I, I work for a company called Tech Pro, and we had done a weight loss contest back in 2007. And everyone put in $200 into the pot, and then the company matched the pot. And so we did four months, and uh, you could pretty much do anything you needed to. We had weekly weigh-ins. I, I designed a logo. We made shirts. Like, it was the whole <laughs> of course you did. The whole de- <laughs> deal. And uh, at the end of four months, I came in second. I had lost, uh, I think, 70 pounds. And... Uh, in four months? Yeah. Damn. Yep. And, and my my boss, who actually had the, the most to lose because he was putting in the half, he got first. Uh, but he he was had a smaller amount, but he was just doing like shakes for lunch and shakes for breakfast and then just doing like lean lean meat for uh, dinner. But uh, so I had gotten down to 266. And so that's kind of my, my goal oh, weight so at the moment. Down I want to get back okay. down there. Gotcha. And so I'm about 20-ish pounds away and I can't wait to get there. So I'm going to I'm going to bring some reality for a second cuz I know that you guys have a pending birth <laughs> August, right? Yes. It's going to be real hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what I hear. That's what they tell me. Not impossible, but it's going to get real hard. Yeah. Um not cuz the baby's going to be eating all kinds of food that's going to drag you down. It's just the whole time thing. Do you and- do meal prep or yeah, a lot of times we'll kind of do a week ahead of time and, and, and prep it up. And But a lot of times it's just we'll feel like eating something and then I'll run to the store. And that's kind of where fasting comes in is because I don't have to make as many meals. And I think my, my, uh, my wife might disagree because when I'm not eating, that means I'm also not helping cook <laughs> probably for her meal. Although I, I definitely should be because she's pregnant. And uh, but uh, fasting it kind of saves saves us money, and uh, it's simpler. So, like, I never have lunch anymore except uh, we have a company-provided lunch every Wednesday. And uh, so occasionally I'll eat that if it's keto-friendly. But if it's not keto-friendly, I just skip it, and I'm not hungry, and it's it's fine. Wow. And then the, the long day. I can do the intermittent, but I've never even <laughs> tried a multi-day. Or it's, even a full day. I've never tried a full day. I first. mean, if you've been hard keto for at least seven weeks, it's it's all mental in the end because your body, and, and as long as you're not like less than, I think they said 4% body fat, I mean, it's... it's no worries there. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> so yeah, you can do it physically. I um, think I might be a factor of 10 over that. So. And it's all mental because, <laughs> I mean, you come home and you just expect to eat dinner. We've been doing it all our life, but... Uh, once you once you get past at least one or two days, it it's, gets easier until you're right in the middle, and that's a hard day. Like so, like because I usually plan that I'm gonna fast for seven days. It's not really I'm just gonna fast now and then and keep going until I I feel like I don't want to. I I try to get to a certain goal. Yeah, I have another goal there, but um, right in the middle when you know you still have at least one or more. Uh, two days that you're not going to be eating gets a little tough, but, uh, the dark before the dawn. <laughs> Cause you, we, I mean, we all like eating food and, and, uh, it's just weird that we've been told all our life that we need to have snacks six times a day. And it's just, it's not good for you. As if, especially if your metabolism's deranged. Did you try, did you ever try doing that with like the, you know, that whole, and this really was a fad like mm-hmm. a few years ago. It's like, no, no, you just need to eat six or seven small meals a day. <laughs> yeah. Did was, you try that one? Sure. Yeah. I mean, that, I that's could probably never, what got me into the mess. But, I could uh, never wrap my head around that one. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not hungry six or seven times a day. So, and it's just amazing that we've been taught wrong. Uh, I mean, and it works for some people. I mean, there's obviously skinny people in the world, um, but there's a lot of overweight people in the world. And I think a lot, if a lot of them check this out, it could really, really help them because. Uh, it's worked for me. So have you been to the doctor through all this? Like, did you, like before you started, was it like, Bob, you have high cholesterol and you know, you've got this and you've got that. 
did you have any of that going on or uh, I hadn't been to the doctor I hadn't been to the, do- uh, the doctor in a long time but uh, I went about maybe two months into keto and I, I was kind of pushing it off because I wanted to get my weight back down because I, I knew what my weight was the last time I had been to the doctor and it was a lot higher and so ladies was, and gentlemen we're talking about middle-aged man shame <laughs> right now <laughs> yes <laughs> So I was trying to wait, and then um, eventually I'm like, well, I, at least I want some like a base point to so say to get my levels, to get the blood work done, to see what my uh, see if I was even like approaching diabetic, and I've, I've never been diabetic, but uh, uh, so yeah, I went and got my my stuff checked, and I was fine. Uh, so my cholesterol was low, my triglycerides were low, uh, my blood pressure was high, was high, and it was high the last time, and so I'm I'm on blood pressure medicine right now. But I think as more of the weight comes off, the blood pressure will come down. So that was kind of your baseline visit. So everything was pretty yep, clean. and I haven't been the, back. Okay. So I'm probably going to go back in the next month, month or two. Definitely ping me because a lot of the heat that I get when I do talk to people about this and mm-hmm. talk about what I eat and especially the fat thing, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, oh, your, your cholesterol is going to go up. And I'm like, no, actually, if you do some research, that's all kind of debunked. Yeah. But I don't have any hard, fast personal medical evidence yet. So. Yeah, I've checked out some of the studies, and uh, it's it's just not correct. And it kind of makes me angry sometimes that we've been told the wrong thing. Did you... Um... Did you follow that? Everybody put their tinfoil hats on now because I'm, <laughs> but uh, the sugar industry paying for those studies to shame basically point blame toward fat instead yeah. of sugar. Yeah. That was in the 1950s, ladies and gentlemen, I believe. <laughs> um, so do your research. There's a lot of, there's big sugar is a real thing. They paid and I hate them. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. All right. So no more keto. Uh, Cause you got a lot of stuff going on besides that. Um, you, it, from where I sit are a little bit of a serial entrepreneur as well. <laughs> um, just, uh, ADHD person maybe. All right. So which, so you have two, two active companies right now, right? Other uh, than your day job. Sort of three. All right. Okay, I guess. So, all right. Educate everyone on the three. Cause uh, I only know of two. So I, I work at tech pro. Uh, so we do a small technology company, uh, uh in Geneva and at St. Charles. And, uh, we well, do I'm act- considering that one your day gig though. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah. So that's kind of, that's what pays the bills obviously. Um, and we do, uh, everything with technology, but then, uh, on the side, I've started a company called Crazy Quail Target Systems, and what that is is we're we're hunters and shooters, and we developed a rotating platform for target throwing machines. So if you ever seen the clay targets, or if you've ever played Duck Hunt on Nintendo, uh, the clay targets going up in the air and you're shooting at them, uh, we made a machine that spins 360 degrees around, so you get them going in all directions, and you control it with an iPhone or Android device. Get out. Yeah, so you can actually place your targets. You can say, I want a straightaway or I want one coming towards me. And you can make a game of all those throws so that each of your friends can shoot the same thing. And the spinning thing, so all right, obviously one shooter at a time because mm-hmm. it's in 360 degrees. No, we have we have five to ten. We usually use uh, cages sort of. Uh, shooting stands so that you can only your gun can only go in certain directions. Okay, you're not, so you're not. Know, yeah. What's the vice? Completely safe. You're not pulling a Vice President Cheney. You're <laughs> yeah, not Dick, Dick Cheney, Cheney anybody? No. Did not happen on our watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's pretty cool. I didn't realize that was controlled by an app. Yep. And so, yeah, we started with a model that was just using an off-the-shelf system. How did you come up with this? It's actually an old game. So uh, it was a manual thrower down in a concrete pit, and you have to send somebody down there to uh, sit in the seat and they'd have to shuffle their feet around manually cocking this uh, this thrower back and then it would come up out of the ground and you wouldn't know which direction They have it was. that at the range just west of St. Charles, right? Isn't there a shooting range out there, outdoor? There is, but they don't have that game. Oh, I game. thought they had that game. No. They have um, the golf game, I know that. I think so. I think they have nine holes or maybe even 18, I'm not sure. But. So yeah, we just like shooting it and a uh, 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 friend of uh, the, one of our guys that like to shoot it was pulling for us until she went off to college and we're like we have no one to <laughs> go down no in that to pull. No, no one to send down in the pit and uh so we're like what if we took an off the shelf automatic system put it on like a lazy susan type turntable and see if it worked and so we just started experimenting and uh so what's the brain on the lazy susan so what's taking the data from the iphone 
and then calibrating where it spins and shoots. Yeah, we have a, basically it's called a gateway. And so it's got Bluetooth in it and that's what works with your phone. And then there's a 900 megahertz wireless from the gateway to the machine. And uh, there's a, obviously a brain on the machine that can, that like can Raspberry accept those. Pi or something that you guys made? Uh, an Arduino Mega. Um, okay. So, so Arduino similar. based. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, so wow. just started making them and selling them and people are just having a ball with them. And you guys go to trade shows with that one, right? Yep. Yep. We, so we go to SHOT Show every year, NRA. There's the one in Pennsylvania we go to called the Great American Outdoor Show. Um, so it takes, takes a good portion of time. So for all my, I'm actually ultra liberal as well, but I do have friends who shoot guns and I like sports shooting cause it's man against machine. So, um, but yeah, that's cool that you guys made that. Yep. So that's cra- That's crazy quail. And so then, do they all sell for the same amount or is there like, there's different levels of, crazy yeah, there's different quail. levels. We basically manufacture the base that makes them spin and all the electronics. And then depending on what thrower you want, you can, um, add on. So there's different sizes of throwers. So if you have a thrower, throwers. can you buy the quail and then just put your thrower on it? Or yeah, you, you have, have to cut off the controls and work and, and use our connectors and, and to put it into the brain. So but, a little DIY if yeah. you use your own thrower. Yeah, or you can send it into us and we'll we'll take care of it. Damn, how old is that company? Um, about 2012 or so. Uh, we had started with a giant model with four throwers on it, and you could keep up to 160 clays in the air in uh, in a minute. <laughs> If you wanted, <laughs> if you held the button down, it would work. Do you have a video of that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. On our website, oh, crazyquill.com. That's awesome. All right. I got to check that out. And then, so that was, that machine's pretty expensive. And so we tried to come down to a smaller budget uh, with our crazy quail mini. And that's the one where we've developed all the electronics ourselves and uh, control it with your iPhone or an, uh, Android device. When do you have time to do this? Well, this is part of my day job. So, uh, oh, okay. So this is a, kind of like a subsidiary. Yeah, of sort tech. of a side okay. company. Yeah. So me and my boss for, for my day job are partners in it, and because uh, we we just he, he got me into shooting actually. So you can uh, boondoggle during the day to work. Yeah. On so crazy it's quail. Yeah. okay. But Very we have cool. we have other people working full time on it now. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's crazy quail. And then I also with another buddy started sort of a lifestyle brand t shirt company uh, called Chubby Tactical. Uh, cause obviously we're, we're both chubby guys and, uh, just made a logo, uh, and what happens when you get down to like a felt like two Oh five, we've had that discussion because Do he's you get fired as a brand man, brand ambassador maybe. at that point. Cause he's doing keto now with me. So he started, he saw what the kind of weight I was losing and I probably lost 50 to 60 pounds within the first three months or so of uh, three or four months. And so he saw it and he's like, okay, I got to do it. And I, I remember the day he started because I went to a, a local fast food place, uh, sort of like Portillo's. Uh, it's called Skippy's. And oh, got, yeah, Skippy's uh, right down the street. From yeah, me. combo bowl uh, for him. Uh, actually, no, I, I take that back. It was five guys. We had ordered five guys and got an extra patty, extra cheese, bacon, the works. And so we got that for lunch while I was at the office. And he's like, yeah, this isn't healthy. And I'm like, yes, it is. Just eat it. And uh, that's kind of how he started. And he's down like... Um, 80 some pounds, I believe. And then another friend of ours is down 67. Wow. Um, so sorry about the keto, but no, uh, no, that's <laughs> just funny. Cause I know it's got an ironic tie to chubby yeah, tactical, so we're, we're maybe chubby, less tactical <laughs> or less chubby tactical. And we're, and we're, we're still in development on that. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, we started, we started uh, with a logo and just made t-shirts and made, I think 126 t-shirts on brought them to one of our trade shows. Cause we were already at the trade show. And uh, sold out of them, and everyone just loved them. Oh, that's and hilarious. so we just have three different uh, backs on the T-shirts, and they say uh, "Gotta love the chub," or "Built for comfort, not speed." And then our newest one is Meal Team Six. I love the Meal <laughs> Team Six reference, or Seal Team Six reference. Yep. And then so now we're kind of branching out, uh, coming out with Chubby Athletics. And so I made my own little hoodie for my 5K. Uh, with uh, Chubby Athletic logo on the on the front, and then well, at- that's your transition right there. Yes. Chubby Athletics, and then you can figure out what's after Chubby. <laughs> yep, yep. But uh, so yeah, we just kind of we're doing that. And how long have you guys been doing the Chubby Tactical? About a year. Okay, so that's a pretty young one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's already you know, doing pretty decent. Just I mean, it's a hobby company. Um, Aren't so. they all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to to some degree. And then, so there is not really a third one. Tech Pro is the third one, or is there one after? Yeah, I meant there was two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Right. No. No. I just 
I, I just have respect for your day job. <laughs> yeah. But that's great that you treat it like an entrepreneurial, like, you know, it's part of three little entrepreneurial adventures, yeah. even though you've been doing that one for how many years now? Uh, my day job, 18 years I've been with the same company. That's pretty awesome. Gosh, that means we're getting old. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've, we've been old. You were super young when you started there then. Yeah, that was right out of uh, college. Actually, during college, I had... Um, Started DeVry. I went to DeVry University and was working there and uh, packing. Um, I was working at a science uh, place over on Fabian. Uh, oh, yeah, Science Surplus. Not Science Surplus. Uh, this is the one on Fabian, which was a VWR Scientific. Oh, VWR Scientific, yeah. yeah. And so I had, was going not to school. Not as cool as Science Surplus. No, no, <laughs> definitely not. But uh, I was going to school at Illinois State. And that's where I went my first year of college and uh, didn't do so hot there um that happens to some freshmen <laughs> without a doubt but came back got a summer job started packing kind of dead frogs and cats and petri dishes into boxes and then uh they were pretty busy so they kept me on over the summer and i started going to a local community college but just wasn't really feeling it and uh checked out devry and really liked it and so started there in november so what did you study at devry computer information systems okay so uh yeah, I think it was like February. Uh, I started to ride in November, and around February, they had let me go. They were kind of tapped out on business. And so I was looking around for jobs and found a, another company that local that was doing computer stuff, and I was a, a tech guy. And so they brought me on part-time while I was going to school, and I would just do I would tech stuff, so fixing computers, uh, setting up new computers. So you were that. like their original IT guy? Not original. They actually had a, a high school kid at the time um, working for him after school. And that was working really well. So they were like, yeah, let's, let's bring on another, another part-timer. And so I was mainly doing just all tech stuff and I did websites on the side just for, as for myself, a hobby thing. So now everyone sees there is the nerd connection. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Funny enough, we were just talking about him. Brocco. Was that yesterday? Yeah. Gosh, I can't even keep track of my days. So you did an Umbraco site a really long time ago. Yeah, and that's actually when I first met you as we were talking Umbraco, and I had set up a site, and uh, that's still been going this whole time. It's still on like an early, early version, uh, I think version three. And um, I just wanted to, I've been listening to your podcast, and every there's at least an Umbraco mentioned probably in every podcast I think I've listened to. Yeah, I got a lot of friends through this Umbraco thing for sure. And so I'm like, <laughs> let's let's check it out again. And uh, it's it's really cool. I really like the concept of the content creation part where you're defining your types. Uh, I don't want to get too geeky, but well, and I think the reason you and I talked about it in the first place is because Tech Pro was kind of looking for a .NET. CMS, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. that's my main language is is VB.net and C sharp.net. So I'd prefer to have a .net system. Yeah. Um, but I kind of looked at the what was out there and there was so much out for like WordPress and Joomla. I, I kind of adopted Joomla as my main CMS. So I've been using that for the last ten years or so. I don't think I've ever done a Joomla site. Drupal, yes. <laughs> it was just and I really like on Brocco, but what worried me was there wasn't a lot of third-party plugins, at least at the time. I don't know if things have changed. And so I just thought if if, a, if I were to recommend a CMS to a client and they want, would want it to expand afterward, it seemed like Joomla had more of that capability. Yeah, I think self-expansion, like if you're from a client perspective, you're not going to turn them loose and have them add stuff still even with Umbraco. Gotcha. You're, you're going to want to be the one adding it for sure. But yeah. there's all kinds of stuff out there. There's either stuff that you can you know, click install or it's so easy to write your own. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like there's not much massive requirement. If you can dream it, you can build it. Like yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't hold you back. I and I, and I know a Brocco commercial though. <laughs> at least Drupal that kind of has that same capability of that. It's sort of like a content creation kit where you're defining each, each piece, but, uh, but it's Joomla, a spaghetti mess. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> but they say it's the friendly CMS. And so far it seems pretty friendly. Which and Brocco. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's probably more related to the community. I mean, it's a pretty friendly platform to work with, but mm -hmm. I think the friendly thing comes from the community. I gotcha. hope. That's what I say at least. <laughs> um, so let's go back to uh, Baby on the Way. Yes. So how long have you guys been married? Um, oh, my God. My wife is going to kill me because uh, I can't. Just uh, ballpark. Three it. and a half years. <laughs> okay. I thought it was pretty new. Yeah. Wow. 2013. I guess that's f uh, four years. So, you know, three and a half in September. And we know so. girl? Baby girl. Yep. All right. 
And we know August. August. Name picked out yet or no? You we don't can't... have to say it out loud. If oh, you don't of course want to. not. But uh, we came up with a name, uh, a list of twenty names, both of us, and then compared them, and we had four names that were the same on both lists. Which so, I... like, you didn't collaborate initially. Nope, you just went I, off and did all. your list of twenty. Each each twenty names, and then we had four of the same, which we thought was really good. Yeah, it's kind of amazing, but at the same time, it's kind of like out of twenty names, you'd almost think maybe like eight. <laughs> but I mean, I don't, I don't know. know. If, if, How if, many... you, if you look at some of these name baby generating websites like there's really weird ones so like a lot of those just go right out the door anyway all right what was the craziest one on your list uh, that didn't make the cut i don't think i remember okay i could have to look it up so four in common four so that's in common. where the starting so we're gonna of... yeah take that to the to the labor and just kind of look at her and oh so it's still sitting at four yeah so you're so baby girl butterworth you're gonna be one of these four names and exactly when we see yep. you that's oh, that's kind of cool. And there might be, I think uh, uh, Andy was talking, one might be out the door because one of our relatives' cat is that name. And I'm like, I don't know if we have to cater to that. That's the kind of stuff I was looking for because yeah. that is how the baby naming game goes. It's <laughs> like you pick a name and then you're like, oh, no, it could be made fun of in this way. And you're like, nope, that's out. Or, <laughs> or God, I remember when I was growing up and there was this kid who had that name and I couldn't stand that kid. And so, nope, that one's out. <laughs> yeah, so we can't, we're not, we're not telling anybody those, those four names. Names, but, no, that's uh, brilliant. We'll we'll see what it ends up with. That is so funny. So, August, have you started to amass uh, stuff yet? Yeah, like baby stuff. Yeah, we got some awesome friends that are started bringing over their hand me downs. Uh, they've been saving kind of for us. I, at least I know our one friend couple. They they've been anticipating this because uh, we've been trying for a while and and hadn't had much luck. Um, and I think actually keto helped that. I was gonna ask kind of getting that body in the right place. Yep. So I don't know. It, I really don't know if it was keto. Um, I had stopped coffee, so I'm actually still not drinking coffee. That's a, another discussion. <laughs> yeah. I might come back to that one very quickly after this. So, and then uh, 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 my wife had taken Clomid, uh, which was a fertility drug. And this was like the first round of it. And uh, so either one of those three things. Or a combination it. of all. Yeah. Or a combination <laughs> of all. Got, got it done. Uh, so yeah. So what's the coolest uh, new baby thing that you've gotten so far? Um, that's a tough one because we haven't really bought much. We've gotten some hand-me-downs. No, that's we, the best thing about first kid. Yeah. So we we did go to Bye Bye Baby the other night and start looking at like cribs. and. Did like, you guys register? Uh, we're working on it. Actually, I, uh, my wife just set that up like, a couple days ago. Uh, but we just looked at the mass of all these different products. For Isn't it crazy every sort. how much cool shit there is, though? It's oh nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be the only reason why I'd want to have a small one again is just for all the cool gear and the yeah, tech gear. So my my wife, when she uh, told me I was uh, we were pregnant, uh, she got me this HTML for babies book. So uh, I have of... not heard of that one. Yeah, it's that's cool. brilliant. I enjoyed it. <laughs> so is it like? A little board book, or is it like an actual book book? Oh, it's sort of board like, but the whole thing is filled with HTML, and so you can just kind of read it too. I just got this kind of like Good Night Moon kind of vibe, but it, in HTML. Kind yeah, of but I, I do have Good Night iPad, so I don't know if you've seen that one. So no. it's Good Night Moon, but Good Night iPad, so it's like turning off all your tech toys. Oh, so we already got that one. We've had that man. one in a while. Oh, I gotta gotta get in touch with the little kid scene. I like the HTML for babies, though. Yeah. So going to make a little uh, lady of code? Hopefully. Yeah, I mean, we're both, me, me and my wife are both geeky. Um, she uh, does like Salesforce development. Um, Ooh, and so with to. me, we're, I mean, we're both nerds. Our house is loaded up with home automation and we both love Apple products. So uh, definitely it's going to be a, a techie, techie girl. So what's your home automation setup? I got a uh, Wink going, a Wink system. Okay, so you're a uh, Wink person. Yeah, a bunch of Lutron lights. Uh, so I, I do have the Lutron hub, but um, not really using it at the moment, uh, just because we use Alexa, and Alexa c seems to work better than cancel. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no, a digital fine. assistant. <laughs> <laughs> I should have I remembered that. No, no, we do it all the time on the uh, video show. We make each other's Alexas. Gotcha. <laughs> So yeah, the Lutron lights, I do Sonos. I really love the Sonos system to listen to music. We have music on all the time. Um, automated garage. Have you gotten any of the ones yet? The Sonos ones? That have, no, I haven't that heard have great things built. about them. And we already have like three or four um, 
digital assistants in the house in the house already, so we don't really need another right. another thing. Um, but they, I don't think they've been great, getting great reviews. I think I can say this now. I was actually in the the integration beta. Yeah, me too. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And then I also had set up. Uh, I hate that you can't talk about Fight Club when you're in Fight Clubs, <laughs> or we could have talked about it. Exactly. Yeah, no, that was a great beta. I was super stoked. To be and then I one. had tried. I had like a, a virtual machine running Linux, and I'd tried a Sonos integration uh, with Alexa before that was even out. And yeah, that, that was that's pretty, a little bit of a shit show. Yeah, that was, that was iffy. <laughs> and still, like, I don't love the integration with uh, Sonos has with Alexa. I think they still need some work on it. Cancel. It does need some love, but it yeah. it works a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I didn't I didn't know about the Lutron lights when uh, when I started getting into it. Mm-hmm. It's once again Joshua, my oldest son's fault. He was the one who got me into it because he bought a. Uh, he bought the Philips Hue starter kit mm-hmm. on his own for his dorm room and then, you know, wanted me to get him a switch because, of course, you can't in the dorm, you can't run a like you can't run a Ethernet hub. Mm-hmm. So sure. He's got it. We've got a he's got a old like a little um, peer to peer network set up in his room. Nice. Just for his lights. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I've always liked the Hue stuff. I don't have any. Uh, mainly for me, it was switches is because, I mean, we all have the switches on the wall. And a lot of times when you get um, smart lights, if you turn the switch off, they're now no longer right. working. They're off, off. And so <laughs> I always, it was my my plan to replace the switches and just keep the bulbs as normal bulbs. And I, I still think that's the way to go. I like the colors. Yeah, the color's cool. Uh, but outside of that, home automation-wise... Um, I do have a, a record player. That, I guess this isn't a home automation. This is more techy. but I have a Raspberry Pi hooked up to a, a record player, a vinyl uh, turntable, and have that broadcasting as a radio station over to the Sonos so I can play my... Uh, so you get vinyl? Yeah, vinyl Sonos, over Sonos. Vi- I guess you could do that with a with a, a RCA jack as well, but I like the I like the Raspberry Pi over the air Yeah, so there's actually there's a, U, a USB... Um, um, box that you can plug the RCA into and that's kind of how it connects. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So like how it. much stuff have you done with Raspberry? Uh, a good amount. Um, I'm also in 3D printing and so I have a, a uh, OctoPi. It's a, basically an image that you can put on a Raspberry Pi that gives it a whole web interface and so it just makes it easy to manage from from anything. There you go. I, he's got fidget the spinner. Uh, fidget spinner in hand I made for Bob fidget, spin- <laughs> fidget spinner. Easy for me to say. Ooh. Yeah, I've been doing that. I don't know about a year and a half, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I'm a techie guy, so. So, what's the coolest thing that you've three D printed? Um, that one's tough. I do mean, you make pieces like so for the stuff that you tinker and build? Do you actually print pieces to make stuff work, like connectors? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, and and that's cool stuff, but it's just not real, very impressive right. to people that are listening right. to the podcast, but. Like we have a, a Roomba type vacuum, a, ro- a robot vacuum, and it was uh, going over a metal piece on one of our IKEA desks and getting stuck. So I'm like, well, if I can just prevent it from going over that piece, then it'll be fine. So I made just designed, and uh, I think at the time it was uh, a website you can go to called Tinkercad. Uh, dot com and you can actually design using simple shapes 3D objects. So I designed this object that would kind of clap. Uh, um, clamp onto the uh, the base of this desk and prevent the, the Roomba from going over it. And so just, just stuff like that. Just a little deterrent. Yeah. <laughs> and more, more recently, we kind of redid our pantry and just got rid of all the flour that, that's been in there for a while, all the different flowers, whole wheat flour. It's gone now, so we've redone our pantry, and I made nice labels, uh, 3D printed plastic pieces that clip on. Oh, uh, like so we 3D? Can, like lettering? Uh, not 3D lettering, but just like a, a box for um, oh, cool. the vinyl because uh, we're, we're kind of big vinyl people. Uh, Do you print the vinyl out. at work? Yeah, so that's part of my uh, day job. Um, yep, he, he's looking at my Bob's water cup uh, that I have right now. And uh, so, yeah, we do large format printing at work. And, and label so, all the things. <laughs> yeah, but my wife's got like a hobby cutter. And so she's really into that, doing mugs and T-shirts and um, everything like that. That's very cool. So we're kind of crafty i guess all right so i know we said that we were done with keto but then you reminded me of flour and so i have to ask because i'm going to try to do it tomorrow Mm -hmm. uh fathead pizza yeah so um do you make the dough Mm -hmm. yeah okay and it's pretty simple recipe right it's just um 
uh, mozzarella cheese. Yeah. Shredded. What's the? Is it? It's something flour though. Yeah, right? almond flour. Almond flour. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't think of the nut. I knew it was a nut flour. Yeah. So you basically take uh, mozzarella cheese that's shredded, and then cream cheese, and you put it in a bowl, and then put it in the microwave for about thirty seconds, and you do that maybe three t- different times, and you mix it up, and it kind of gets all stringy like you imagine dough is and it just kind of congeals and becomes like a ball. And that's when you start mixing the uh, almond flour in and some people do an egg as well. Some people don't. And, uh, you roll it out and it's, it's very close to pizza dough. Are you egg or no egg? I think I'm egg. We actually haven't done it in a while. Um, but, uh, I think the last time we made it, we put an egg in it. But um, I think that is on the plan. I, I think I committed. Yeah, and it's to just like tomorrow. pizza. So like a, a lot of people think going keto is extreme because you can't have bread, you can't have potatoes, you can't have beer, or at least most That's most beers I that I had mark. enjoyed. That's where I missed the mark. <laughs> so are you not drinking at all? No, I uh, bourbon. Uh, whiskey. Uh, so bourbon's good on keto. Yeah. So any of those hard liquors, um, I'm a vodka, vodka guy. Yeah. So as long as you're not mixing the sugar in with it, uh, it's totally, yeah. totally vodka keto. water. <laughs> so yeah, that's just, I do Jack on ice or a gentleman Jack on ice and, uh, yeah, I love it. And plus wine. You can do, uh, the low, uh, the drier wines. Yeah, so so red low wine. glycemic wines, yeah. but I haven't really tried those. Yeah. So, I mean, some people think it's extreme, getting rid of all this stuff but there for certain things that you still kind of feel a craving for there's there's options there's alternatives and so there's almond flour there's coconut flour there's uh, alternative sugars like stevia or erythritol or xylitol um and so you can't really you're not really depriving yourself a lot so like my brother has asked me he's like are you ever going to cheat and i mean i've been on this nine months now and uh I'd say I wouldn't really say I have had a cheat day. I've had a couple. Really good on you, man. It's just I haven't I haven't needed to. Like I, I go to Skippy's and get the combo bowl, which is Italian beef, cut up uh, Italian sausage covered with hot peppers and cheese. And they do that as a bowl. I didn't yeah, know that. Yep. So they have that as a bowl. You can get that from Portillo's as, uh, uh, as well, but it's, I don't think it's quite as good. Um they also have a gyro bowl that's that you can okay. get with lettuce and tzatziki sauce, which tzatziki sauce has like a couple carbs, but it's not it's not horrible. Yeah, I'm okay to get a handful here and there. I yeah. mean, you can't you, you're supposed to have some, so mm-hmm. yeah. That's what I like about keto versus Atkins. I felt like Atkins was so militant, mm-hmm. like that was a zero carb almost kind of. I yeah. guess they did let you. Well, rock the, up that was to right in 20. the in the beginning yeah. stages was zero carb, and then they started adding it back in, and that's when you started because when you start having these carbs you start craving carbs more and so a lot of people think it's crazy like i haven't had potato chips or cookies or anything but once you stop having it you stop craving it and so it's it's no problem oh man well i think uh unless you have something that you want to cover i Um, mean we kind of front-ended it to back end (laughs) oh i did forget Mm -hmm. so you have listened to a couple of the podcasts yeah and so, you know, one of the last questions that I ask, mm-hmm. I think if you've made it to the end, if not, sure. no, I'm no offense taken. I know most people don't listen all the way to the end. Last question I typically ask a guest is who is someone that you and I know that you think would be good for this podcast? Yeah, I think uh, I'd like to hear from Chuck, uh, our buddy Chuck. Yeah, um, I've been, have you been watching his, yeah, his put a yeah, video up videos the other day? Of, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm so glad he's doing work, wood working now. So mm-hmm. I can't wait to talk to him about that. Plus, I want to get the scoop on some of his uh, job adventures. Too, yeah, so, so I'd love to hear more about what he's what he's doing now. And uh, that's that'd, a that'd be a fun episode. That same page. Oh, God, it'd be a <laughs> crazy episode for sure. Yeah. All right, well then, I, he is on notice. Chuck Fisher, you are up <laughs> in the very near future for My Friends Are Amazing. Well, Bob, thanks for coming and hanging out. No and problem, all thanks things. for having me. One of the other things that I say is that, you know, we covered a very narrow band of ground, so mm-hmm. I always reserve the right to recall a witness yeah. or a guest, so I'd love to have you on uh, maybe after you get settled in with the yet Newborn, yeah. unnamed forename option baby. Maybe I'll get back to the doctor as well and kind of get those updated uh, Oh yeah. Updated well, stats. Ping me on that anyway cuz I want to I'm curious about the yeah. cholesterol debunking is what my main focus is. Okay. Eating yeah. all that meat if your cholesterol doesn't go up, that means that that's all fake. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. <laughs> all right, well thank you very much and uh till next time. Thanks. Hey, well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, Just a reminder that Bob and I are not doctors. We're both just kind of exploring uh, 
this ketogenic lifestyle and teaching our bodies to use fat for energy. There's tons of research out there. Look it up um, and make your own choices. But uh, thanks for listening. And, uh, you know, Bob hit me on Facebook right after the episode. And he said that he really hoped that just one person listening to the story would kind of be inspired by uh, his weight loss journey. And uh, I think it's pretty inspirational. So hopefully uh, somebody gets something out of it. And uh, if you do, just let me know. Uh, And if you'd like to have more guests that have more of a, a lifestyle, I don't know, concept to share or whatnot but uh be looking out for that next episode i'd love to do it again next week we'll see if my schedule allows but definitely within the next two weeks so have a great day and catch everyone the next time bye